Welcome to my learning to load JSONs from the resources folder video. This video only covers loading from the resources folder. If you want to know how to load from the persistent data folder as well as save to the persistent data folder, then check out the video in the description. To start, I always like to show proof of concept. So I'm going to head over to my resources folder real quick where I have a file here called mygarage.json. You can see that it has two entries. You can tell Ford Ranger and Mazda Miata. So if I were to go back to Unity and select my JSON loader, you see I have no vehicles currently. When I hit play, it's set to load on awake. And you can see those entries are being loaded. So it indicates that it works. Now let's go ahead and get started on setting this up. The first thing we'll be doing is getting Newton Soft JSON from the Asset Store. It is a free asset. It should always be a free asset. You can also get it outside the asset store if any reason it disappears. I use this over Unity's uh, utility because it's a lot more flexible and it's quicker. So I just did a search for Newton Soft JSON and then go ahead and click this entry right here and import it. And if you need to pause the video to do that, go ahead and do so. If by any chance you actually want to copy my example, then go ahead and go to your resources folder or make one if you don't have it already and then make a new folder called resource loader and then make a new file called mygarage.json and in that file make it look like this I'm gonna go back to unity and in my scripts folder I have a vehicles script this is my database script Notice I have a public struct called any vehicle. The class name does not have to match up with the file name. You can use a struct or you can use a class. It does not matter. However, which field do you want serialized must be public. That is very important. And also the class must be marked as system.serializable. And if you have any other classes within the class or struct, they also must be marked as system.serializable if you want them to be loaded. And while I have this open, I just want to compare to my garage real quick. Notice I have make and then Ford and then model and then Ranger. And that's what's populated per entry. Now let's get started on setting up the loading functionality. I'm going to head back to Unity, make a new script called database loader. It will be a mono behavior. That way we can just attach it to an object so that you can see what's going on. And once you have that script created, Go ahead and open it up. My script is already complete because I wrote this in the other video. Normally I go line by line explaining what I do as I, as I type it out. However, there's not really a lot of code here. Uh, a lot of it's just comments. So I'm going to keep this as is. It's pretty much the bare minimum at this point. And I'm going to explain what's happening throughout the code. You can find a link to this code within the description. First, I have a list of any vehicle. Keep in mind any vehicle is a structure which will contain the database entries. So for every entry, they will be added to this list, which is named underscore vehicles. Next, I have a file extension of .json. You don't necessarily need this step, but if you were to specify what file you're loading as you load it, so for example, mygarage.json, I'm using this as the file extension because when we load from resources, we have to actually remove the file extension and by knowing what it is ahead of time, it just makes it a little bit easier. There are other methods you can use to look up the file extension if you want to be dynamic, but in this example, we're going to assume it's a JSON. Next, I have the database name. This is the path and file name of the database. I have it as resource loader slash my garage. And if I wanted, I could even add .json on there. It would not negatively affect this, this application. And going back to Unity real quick, this is where I showed you where I had the resources, the resource loader folder, and then the mygarage.json file. Even though you can't see the extension, this is a .json file. Next, under awake, I am setting the vehicle's collection to whatever is returned from my return database method, where I pass in the type of database it is, in this case, the any vehicle type. And then I pass in the database name, which will contain the path inside the resources folder. Moving down, I'm removing the file extension from the path. This basically checks that 
if the path length is greater than or equal to the file extension, then it's possible that it may contain the file extension. If it's not at least as long as the file extension, then it's literally impossible to contain the extension, in which case we'll just return the path as is. But if it is long enough to contain the extension, we're going to do a couple checks. First, we're going to cast path to lower just to make the comparing a little bit easier. I am aware there are other methods to compare while ignoring case sensitivity, uh, but in this example, this is how I'm going to do it. Next, I'm going to grab a substring where basically that starts at a specified index and then it reaches out a number of characters. So by starting at the path length minus the extension length, let's say my path is some path slash my file dot json. Now let's just assume this was 15 characters. Um, I don't know how many it actually is. And we know the extension is five characters long because it's dot json. So this would ex first start by extending all the way out the length of the path and then subtracting five. So it'll go back one, two, three, four, five. So your entry point is going to be right here, right before the dot. And then it's going to go out the file extension length. So it's going to go out one, two, three, four, five. So we'll be comparing this text against the file extension also to lower so that way that the case sensitivity matches up. And if those entries do match up, then we're going to start at the beginning of the path, the zero index, that'd be the very start, just like an array. And then we're going to go out the path length minus the file extension. So we're going to go right before that period, just like before up here. And then we're going to return that value. So it's going to return the path without the file extension. Moving down, we're going to remove the leading directory separator. So in most cases, that will be your forward slash or backslash. And what this does is if your, uh, let's say your database path is my path slash file dot JSON, this will change it to my path slash file dot JSON. This is because if you add the forward slash, often that will create errors when trying to load from the resources. And this is just a simple solution to get around that. And like before, we're going to get the substring of 0 0.1, which means we're going to get the very first character and then go out one. And we're going to compare that and see if that equals the directory separator char or if that equals the alt directory separator char, which means if it's a forward slash or a backslash. And if it is, then we're going to return the path starting at the first index. So one instead of zero, meaning we're just going to skip the first character. If it's not a slash, then we're going to return the path as is. And you may notice that I am casting to a char. I'm parsing this data right here and comparing it as a char because as this states, this is a char and you have to compare a char against another char. So that's why I'm doing this. Okay, so moving down to pulling the text asset from the resources folder. As you can see, this returns a string result of a text file from resources, or it could be a JSON file that ultimately is a text file. And we're passing in the path. So in my example, you can't actually see it, but it is throughout the code. Um, what that would do is I'll pass in this as the path the resource loader slash my garage dot JSON. And what that's going to do when it hits this is first it's going to call the remove file extension path. So it's going to remove the dot JSON and then it's going to remove the leading separator char. So if that was on there, that would also disappear as well. We just have a quick sanity check just to make sure that the string is not empty. And now we're going to create a text asset type and just use resources dot load at the given path and you have to cast it as a text asset. And then we check if text asset is not null, meaning if it was found, the file was found and returned, we're going to return the text property within that text asset. And that would be whatever text is within the JSON. Otherwise, we're going to return an empty string, which indicates that the file could not be found. Going down to our last method, we have return database. This is the primary method you'll be calling, which will call all the other methods for you and do all the checks. And this returns a database of generic type. 
So you could pass in any database type and you could fulfill any list that you would like. And uh, how this works is it returns a result using the return file resource, which if you remember, calls this right here. And if the result is found, it will return the text to it. Otherwise, it will return string.empty. And once we have that result, we're going to do a simple check that if the length is not zero, you could also do if does not equal string.empty. Then we're going to call JSON convert dot deserialize object and then we're going to pass in list t just like with the method and then we're going to pass in the string of result which is the text that it's going to deserialize and we're going to convert it to a list because it will be populating our vehicles list if by any chance the result length is zero it'll throw a warning saying that the result text is empty and then return an empty list of the type you pass in and I just want to point out that there are a few namespaces that you'll have to include in order to set this up. You'll be needing system.link, system.io, and newtonsoft.json. You also need the system.collections.generic and Unity Engine, but that should come by default. And that's all there is to this. You also don't need this as a serialized field. I only have it serialized to show you that it is in fact loading the database, which I did at the beginning of the video.